want to summarize is to say that as a country, we've been doing quite badly. In the last 10 years, for example, uh, Transparency International has been doing a number of studies. Uh, you know, there is a famous or infamous corruption perception index, which is a perception tool. We have the East African Bribery Index, which we do it in the five East African countries. We also have uh, the anti-corruption barometer, the global corruption barometer, and many others. And all of them paint a gloom picture of where we are as a country. We are always in the last quartile. For the last, for the last 10 years, we've been in the last quartile of any ranking on corruption issues that I have come across in the last quartile. And what is interesting about our position and the way it interacts with the public is that the public is not reporting corruption. And I saw a few tweets earlier, and one of my, 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 my friends online was telling me, you know, there is no point in reporting corruption. It's, it's, it's worthless in this country. But if you look at the statistics, you then begin to see that not more than 10 incidences of corruption get reported out of 100, out of 100. So in other words, if you want to look at it from, uh, just for argument's sake, if you are looking at, at, at 100 cases that have, have taken place, the highest statistics I have seen, uh, from whether it's from the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, from the University of Nairobi, the Institute of Development Studies, or from Transparency International, you realize there are, there is, there is, there is less than 10 will be reported. If you quickly, uh, you know, think that those 10, or those less than 20, 10, are the ones that preoccupy all the institutions that we have established in the fight against corruption, then you begin to understand the, the enormity of the task ahead of us. One of the core issues insofar as corruption is concerned is that all public resources belong to the people of Kenya and must be used for their benefit. I think that is, that is a bottom line, you know. If we are able to attain that, then we find that some of the challenges we face as a country around corruption, around national cohesion, will, 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 will be mitigated considerably. We need to rein in the role of money in politics. This has been very damaging. The, the, the attempts to deal with it through the Constitution, because the Constitution provides that the IBC has a constitutional mandate to regulate the use of campaign finance. By the way, they have not done that. For two elections now, they have not done that. So they are guilty of neglecting a constitutional mandate or cherry picking what to, to do and what not to do. But the role of money in politics need to be, needs to be addressed from the perspective of you know, the expense that goes into elections, but also the bribes that have to be paid in the electioneering period. We call them handouts. They're basically just bribes. And then the issues of basic rights and services need to be assured. They are basic things that Kenyans need. You know. If we are a state that protects its own citizens, we would be concerned about the health, water, food, perhaps uh, um, energy, but fundamentally shelter for all our citizens. The second issue here is that we have a double standard. The standard of integrity applicable to appointed officers is, 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 is much higher than the standard of integrity applicable to state officers. It was deliberately weakened so that the, the Constitution talks about, you know, the, the elected officers being elected. It doesn't put any, 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 any standard. It just talks about election in a free and fair elections. So that is enough. So even if the devil walked into that election, and uh, it would be good to go. I know that some amendments to the law have been put in place, but we need to strengthen the framework so that we know who are the true beneficiaries of the, the entities that trade with government. And this is also a government commitment that was made in May of 2016 at the London and Corruption Summit. I think I will, I will stop there. Thank you.